Hey there, it's Anonymous T, where we spill the tea anonymously. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day today, sending good vibes, sending positivity, sending blessings, and good energy to each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So today we're talking Big Brother 26, because tonight was part one of the season premiere, and, and I have a lot to react to, you guys. We're going to talk the good, the bad, the ugly, and, and what in the AI is happening with the show. Uh, so first and foremost, it came out earlier that live feeds, you guys, are not going to start until after the second part of the premiere episode comes on tomorrow. Uh, so we're going to already start off missing like three days of live feeds and having no idea what's happening. The other side is that they are no longer allowing you to archive or save any previous uh, live feeds. So pretty much you got to watch it when it happens and either screen record the entire time, whether you're awake or sleep or whatever. Otherwise, there's not going to be this ability, apparently, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounded like you're not going to be able to rewind, you know, say you get up and you want to go to bed at a reasonable hour and you wake up the next day and you want to rewind, see what happened over the night. Uh, it sounds like that's not going to be the case. It sounds like you're not going to be allowed to do that which sucks you guys which completely sucks which isn't fair I, I think the purpose of this is that the production crew thinks that if they get ahead of any type of you know racist or homophobic or misogynistic house guests that make those types of comments that by limiting the feeds and by limiting the opportunity for people to screen record and replay it over and over and over until it makes TMZ and People Magazine of all of the tomfoolery people that you guys continue to cast for their show that it can minimize your scandals that it can minimize your controversy but I feel like this also is a preemptive strike and potentially decreasing the number of days per week that we do watch feeds which i feel is a huge mistake bb canada started to do that although they got canceled for other reasons because basically uh the show didn't want they didn't want to pay to produce the show anymore but nonetheless they you know did away with live feeds first then they called like these daily dallies where it was like a, a summary of live feeds that they were doing at certain times and uh and, and it's just tomfoolery you guys i i don't like where this is heading and, and, and the thing is, is like people, you know, ultimately you, you were in 2024. It, it shouldn't be rocket science, how to be a human being and how to pe treat people with decency, right? So nonetheless, um, I'm off my soapbox on that because again, uh, Big Brother, you, you tend to cast the same people. So, so we can't help it if you are going to continue to allow problematic people who don't give a crap about sensitivity training and are going to be themselves, you know, once the cameras, you know, once they realize the cameras aren't really around 24-7 like that or they think that, you know, nobody's going to know what they said. Nonetheless, let's get into the episode, which also was another issue that I had because... Uh, for some reason, they decided to make it a two-parter, except for the two-part, you guys, was one hour. And, and it's like, this is premiere night. Why couldn't it have aired 8 to 10? What, what was on the schedule that you couldn't do a two-hour premiere? And, and this is why I watch the live feeds, because the scripted shows never give what they're supposed to. And how do you leave on a cliffhanger and not show a premiere episode without all 16 house guests moving into the house? Can, can you make it make sense? What type of game are we playing right now? It, it's, uh, it's utterly blasphemous, you guys, if you ask me. So with that being said, we got introduced to the first eight house guests. Uh, there was a 50-year-old woman. Uh, there was a gentleman um, from the tri-state area uh, who was interesting. There also was a lady who kind of reminds me of America, except for she's like six foot something tall. Uh, so I think her showman's is going to be arriving tomorrow because she said that she uh, doesn't want to talk to anybody who is um, shorter than her or wants to get in a showman's with anybody that from, um, that's shorter than her with heels on and so then also we had a gentleman that is from Hawaii we also had somebody who works at the movie theater in Florida I believe uh, we had Cam who said he was a professional uh, 
sports athlete, but technically he played for the CFL. But anyways, he got an ACL injury and ultimately became a physical therapist. But um, some of these men, you guys, that you guys are bringing in from Maryland, Thank you. Uh, he is easy on the eyes. Um, nonetheless, I'm here for it um, until I see the live feeds and something problematic happens. But at least for now, we're, we're good with Cam. Cam is very good eye candy. Uh, then we also have Chelsea. Chelsea is gorgeous. She said she's half hood, half pastor, you guys. Basically, you know, said that, you know, she was an athlete. Also says that, you know, she also mentors kids and, and speaks, you know, the word to children and, and Bible study and all the things. Uh, so essentially said that she feels like she's going to be asking a lot of forgiveness from God. But she said she's going to do it after the show. But I think it's going to be after, like, every interaction she has with these people. It's about to be a mess. Uh, then uh, their lady who was 50 years old, she, like, immediately, like, latched on to check. Chelsea and it was a kind of weird because I'm like you guys like literally just got there like two seconds ago like let's chill right and so then uh there also was this lady she was four foot nine I believe she's Filipino and uh she said she's a bartender and you know essentially seems like she's gonna be a hoot she kind of reminds me personality wise potentially of another blue but uh this one seems to have like a little bit more pizzazz um that might be a little bit more entertaining so we will see how that goes so they entered um the house and uh it was cute because both chelsea and uh chelsea was a part of the first four that entered and then cam led the charge of the second four group of four that was entered and they both opened the door you guys so that the other house guests could go through so they were not the first to go through and then i was confused about i think his name is tucker's history about the first um one going in the house because i'm like uh, do you know your bb trivia about what still is cursed and what still isn't but nonetheless uh we had a competition as you guys know where you got to vote on whether or not you could add a 17th house cast and i had a feeling this was going to be some bs you guys i had a feeling right off the jump this was going to be some bs they had this girl with blue hair who said her name was ansley ainsley um and you know told her about herself she was from, from san diego was already in the diary room and i just kind of felt like i i felt like something's not right here something isn't right it was giving ai it was giving phony baloney but i couldn't put my finger on it just quite yet because i was like why are we adding a 17th house guest right now it doesn't make any sense when we don't even have the other eight people moved in yet it, it just was too fishy for me. So nonetheless, uh, the eight house guests had to vote whether or not they wanted this mysterious AI generated person to be in the house with them. And it had to be a majority vote out of the first eight people. So it had to be at least five people that were locked in for yes. And uh, that didn't happen. It was tied deadlocked at 4-4, four, four, you guys. So 4-4 four, four means that you were not coming into the house. And then that's when they revealed that this was an AI generated person and it was giving like uh, the, the villainous, the most villainous and scariest uh, version of, of an avatar uh, that you could think of, you guys. Uh, remember the show on BT Cedar's World? Man, that was ahead of our time. I'm like, can we have Liz, Liz given her some some clothes, give her something to look at? I don't know. Maybe Zingbox is going to be interested in her or something. I don't know. But nonetheless, she basically said this was a test and that for the people who said yes, they're going to get a competition. They get to compete for a secret power. And the people who said no, they are going to get a disadvantage. Now, you would think if you are competing for a power that it would be a fairly manageable competition to do. But they said, no, 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 no. We're going to make this as hard as possible to get this power. So essentially, it was like a twister. <laughs> it was like a, uh, a razor uh, where you have to sit in this seat and it spins around and you have to figure out what the color sequence is between red, yellow, green, and blue. And you have to correctly get so many, uh, you know, you have to press the button of each color when you're done spinning your life out. Uh, and how whoever gets the most correct in the sequence, uh, you know, 
in the shortest amount of time will get the secret power. And so I was looking at the distribution of the people who were, you know, going to be in this. And I'm like, well, if you're short, you're going to be at a disadvantage. You're going to be very dizzy uh, because the 50 year old woman, she like literally like spilled, spinned out and almost fell out. And, and then the um, Asian lady, she also, um, she's very petite, very short. So she was waltzing into walls. It even took her a second even to just get out the chair. So nonetheless, I had already ruled them out because I was like, mm -mm. and so then uh, once we got to Mackenzie, who's the one who's like super duper tall, I was like, she's going to win this because due to her height, she is not going to be as dizzy and as confused and disoriented as her short house guest. And guess who was right, you guys? Guess who was right on the, had the nail on the head? So she got the most right in the shortest amount of time, and she's going to get a power. And I already know what her game plan is going to be this season, and we are just going to have to sit back and watch. I think she's going to be in it for the long haul. Also, we got to the people who said no competition, you guys, and they tried to make it sound very scary. But you guys, it was such an easy competition. So they tried to scare you because they said basically there's these four stations. You have to put your head up um, through this like little, um, you have to put your head up and look through this, I don't want to say tunnel, but kind of like your head basically is secure and you're looking around this box of jumbled words, but each box, one has like snakes in it, one has cockroaches in it, one has, um, Snakes, cockroaches, and, and I forget what else, you guys. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the guy from the tri-state area said it's like home for him. <laughs> so nonetheless, but, but these people aren't, the snakes and stuff isn't going to attack you. Uh, it's just like roaming around. But essentially, there's like, I think, 12 words or something, like anxiety, dread, fear, terror, scared, afraid, all those things. And essentially, you have to look at the jumbled words in each of the four stations and quickly uh, select the word that is corresponds with those jumbled up words associated with that particular box. Once you think you have the four correct words, then you have to plug in to basically make it seem like you're generating, you know, the, the system. And then you press the button to be done. And so everybody looked like they were breezing through it. And it looked like Tucker was going to be last place until Chelsea said, hold my beer. I am going to do everything wrong. <laughs> so it took her a while to get the first box. And I was like, uh oh, I was like, this is not going to end well for old girl. And so then I think once she finally got the hang of it, then she flew through the other three words. Uh, and then she hurried up and hit the button that she was done. And uh, the cameraman was so messy because they kept, you know, pinning to the plug that she was supposed to plug in to activate the thing, activate the electricity. And she kept looking at the words because she was about to, for a second, go back and, and switch the words. And she thought she got some of the words wrong. And I was like, no, I was like, no, Chelsea, pick up the pace. I was like, plug it in. They, they must have panned to the plug, you guys, like five or six times. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. I'm like, plug it in, Chelsea, plug it in. And I was like, she's going to be last. She is going to be last, you guys, and it is what it is. Uh, so nonetheless, she finally realized that the plug was what she needed, and then she plugged it in, and then she clocked in, and I was like, okay. Uh, so nonetheless, that was that. So she was the lowest. Uh, so basically, if you are the highest, you receive a power. If you get the worst score, you get a punishment of sorts. It's a um, hindrance to your game. So the only thing I can think of is either Chelsea is going to be an automatic nomination or she is going to be a have not or or there's going to be some disadvantage that she has like maybe she won't be able to compete for the HOH competition. Maybe she won't be allowed to compete for anything this week. I don't know. I, I don't know what how extensive, you know, this punishment or this, uh, you know, thing is going to be detrimental for her. But I hope she stays in the house for a while. Uh, I have showman's uh, delusions of a Chelsea and Cam situation. But nonetheless, I, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to put, you know, all my eggs in one basket of, of that going down either. <laughs> so nonetheless... Um, you know, it was a decent episode, but but you know how these edited episodes are. They're always cheesy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so then we got a sneak peek of some of the house guests that are going to be moving in tomorrow. And we saw the police officer, the undercover cop, who said that he's not going to tell anybody he's a cop. And I'm like, here we go. But rumor has it he's married to a black woman. Uh, so nonetheless, we'll see what happens there. 
Also, uh, we had some other people that appeared. Like I said, this other gentleman looked like he was tall enough to be Mackenzie Showmance. So um, that might be who she's waiting for uh, to come into tomorrow. Um, uh, just a few people just looked like they were having a blast, that they were excited to come into this house. So we will see how that goes, you guys. But nonetheless, and then they gave them ginger shots at the end of this episode as opposed to alcohol or like some wine or something. I don't know what's going on this season. Um, as for the house, because I didn't do a video when they revealed like the initial tour of the house. So um, I thought for the most part it was okay, except for I did not like the bedrooms. I, I thought the bedrooms were a disaster. And I think one, you have to like climb up. It doesn't look safe, especially like if at nighttime. And then the weird room, I think it's like the pink room with like all the zebras and, and stuff. It, it's, it's very, very eclectic, very eccentric, but it's just, it, as a viewer and a live feed watcher, it's not appealing to the eye <laughs> at all. But as far as everything on the exterior, it looks like they've made some more room for the kitchen and island area. Like the common areas are okay. The common area areas look good. It's really just the bedrooms that they just needed to just kind of just wash, rinse, and repeat and just start over again, you guys, because it was just not giving. Uh, so nonetheless, that was the episode. Again, very huge mistake to just not knock out a two hour premiere right off the bat. And then we could get our usual, you know, Thursday episode of, you know, some unseen moments from the past couple of days. But, you know, again, CBS always likes to do things wrong. So nonetheless, uh, we have to wait and see what happens from there. But um, overall, you know, I'm glad the show is back. It seems like a decent cast until I see the live feeds and they piss me off and I'm rooting down to rooting for nobody <laughs> or maybe one or two people uh, and then I check out. But nonetheless, we will see. We've got a long 90 days to see who potentially is going to win this 750K. I, but I mean, not a bad start. I, I was just yelling at the TV because I was like, I can be doing this. I could be doing this, right? And there seems to be a lot of super vans that are going to be coming on this season as well. So that'll be interesting to see how that helps or hinders their game and whether or not, you know, it, it'll be of use. But it seemed like at least everybody had a familiarity. It was funny because I think um, I forgot who it was that told their dad <laughs> that they were going on Big Brother. Uh, I think it was the um, the guy that worked at the video store. I think he told his dad, and, and his dad was like, uh, what? what? What's that? <laughs> Again, that was hilarious. Listen, even my family knows about Big Brother. They may not watch the show, but they've at least heard of it. They're familiar with it. Uh, they know I like to watch it and all of the things. They know that I'm obsessed with the live feeds, but they don't watch it, but they at least know what the show is and what it's about. It's been around forever. So, um... So yeah, so there is that. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts. Did you guys tune into the premiere? I, oh, also a funny story really quickly is uh, Taylor and Kylan and some other BB alumni, they had a big premiere party in New York tonight for the show, except where it looks like they might have missed the premiere because they were stuck in the elevator, you guys. <laughs> they were stuck in the elevator. Kylan went live for a little bit and said that the fire department was coming at some point to help them out. It was like five or six of them in there. And uh, it was just a hot mess. I was like, maybe it just wasn't meant to be, you guys. It was not meant to be for you guys to do this premiere. So nonetheless, they said, let's just keep you in the elevator for as long as possible. Uh, so <laughs> there was that. Uh, so let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.